Hey there, this is Rene for Network Lessons. In this video, we'll do something fun, and we're going to play a bit with LLMs, such as uh, ChatGPT or Claude, and we're going to see how we can use these tools for us network engineers. Huh? So we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do with these uh, tools. So let me show you. So what I like to use is this tool, it's called um, MSTY, or I guess that's short for uh, MISTY or something like that. And I prefer to use this instead of the, uh, the ChatGPT web UI or the, uh, the Claude web UI. Because what you can do is, first of all, you can use the API uh, for these tools, which is cheaper than the, the subscription for ChatGPT or Claude. But also you can run these LLMs in parallel. So I can enter a single prompt and then um, it will run GPT and Claude simultaneously or any other LLM that you want to, uh, to use. So um, we're going to have some, some fun with this. So let's start with, um, let's say we want to generate some code that could be useful. Let's say I want to create an Ansible playbook. Uh, so these N LLMs are pretty good with uh, code. And what I want to do is something like this, to create Let's say we want an Ansible playbook to create a loopback on a Cisco iOS router. So when we do this, what you'll see is that both of them are creating something. And what they'll do is, first of all, that they'll create that um, playbook in YAML. So that's what we have over here. But you also get a walkthrough of how to use this. Uh, so you need to create an inventory file. It gives us an example of an inventory file. And it also tells us to run that uh, playbook. And we can see that both GPT and Claude are creating something similar. Now, we don't really know whether this is technically correct or not. Uh, it's possible that it has uh, errors or maybe even modules that don't work. So for example, when we look at this code, we can see that GPT came up with this, where it uses this module, uh, Cisco iOS, iOS underscore config. And over here we can see that Claude is using this, iOS underscore L3 interface and so on. So I don't really know whether these modules or libraries really exist or not. Huh? So that's some sometimes an issue with these LLMs. Huh? They can hallucinate. They can generate something that looks great, but that might be uh, incorrect. Um, but it's something to try. Uh, so that's also an advantage of running these two in parallel. You'll have two outputs. You can try both of them. And when it doesn't work, you can enter the error here, paste it in, and probably it will come up with a new um, solution huh, or a new um, uh, updated uh, code. Anyway, so... This is quite nice to, um, to do. Um, we can also do something similar. You can also use it for Python code, perhaps. So I could say, uh, now create Python code. And let's say I want to do the same thing. And I want to use the uh, Paramico SSH library. Uh, that's a uh, common SSH library or module for uh, Python. So let's just generate something. So you can see both of them, they come up with, um, with something. And in my experience, sometimes GPT comes up with a great answer, sometimes Claude, sometimes both of them. So I like to run them both uh, in parallel uh, like this. So it's coming up with some code, how to uh, make this work. And it will also tell us uh, how to run that code. Uh, I think uh, GPT doesn't, but it does tell us that we have to use pip to install that Paramico um, module. And over here, Claude tells us, okay, you also have to install Paramico, but you also can run that code like this. Uh, so um, it also works great for code like this. Same thing as with an Ansible playbook. If you run this code, it has any errors, copy and paste that error in here, and usually it comes up with a new revision and it might fix your, uh, your issue. 
Uh, I also experienced that if uh, like these these examples, uh, these uh, these these Python scripts, they're very short. Uh, but if you have a um, a larger script, uh, it can sometimes be useful to uh, copy and paste smaller pieces of code. Uh, so do, so don't try to generate an entire program in one go, but just uh, boil it down to different functions uh, and then ask these LLMs to write uh, functions one by uh, one. Uh, that can sometimes uh, help. Um, okay, what else can we do? So we had a couple of examples of code. Um, I have one more example. Uh, we could do something like this. Let's say I want to create a C Cisco CMS topology file. So Cisco CML is an emulator from Cisco huh? and it uses YAML topology files. So let's see if it can create a Cisco CML topology file. And it created something. And this is a good example of hallucination. Um, so what do we see here is that both of these are creating something different. So GPT created something like this. Uh, this YAML file, topology nodes, R1, and so on. Uh, and this looks all okay. It looks okay. But when we look at the right side, we can see that Claude created something that starts with lab, and then description, notes, and so on. So one of these two is probably uh, wrong. And I don't know at the top of my head what a Cisco CML file exactly looks like. But it's possible that one of these two is not going to um, to work. Uh, but we could uh, we could try that. Also, what can be useful is that if you already have a Cisco CML topology file, copy and paste that over here, and then ask it. I need something similar to this uh, topology file, but it should contain four routers, something like this. Uh, so if you give it an example, um, you probably get a better uh, better response. Okay. All right, what else can we do? Um, I think these are plenty of code examples. It can be useful for uh, something such as uh, show commands. Uh, let's say I want a list of Cisco iOS show commands. And what I'll do is, let me get rid of iOS over here. Um, this is like a huge list, but I had something I, something else in mind. This is what I had in mind. Uh, so if I ask it for a list of Cisco show commands, it's not going to be really helpful because that will be a huge uh, list. We'll restrict it to OSPF um, commands. That's what I had in mind. So now both of them, they generate a list with these... Um, OSPF show commands. And it's possible that some of these commands don't work, don't exist, but it gives me something to work with. Also, by default, all of these commands are probably for Cisco iOS. Uh, and that's because Cisco iOS is the most common Cisco operating system. So if I had Cisco Nexus in mind, uh, I should have specified that I want a list of OSPF show commands for Cisco Nexus. Uh, so when you're creating prompts, you should be as specific as, uh, as possible. Let me show you something else, because it's also useful for debugging. So what I can do is I can ask it to analyze something. So let me paste something here. So this is the output of two routers that are trying to establish a uh, OSPF neighbor adjacency. And it's not working. So what it's doing here is GPT is telling me this debug output indicates that there is a mismatch in the mismatch in the OSPF hello parameters. And here it's breaking down the output. 
And then it's telling us that these should match, uh, the hello and the dead interval should match in the subnet mask. It's telling us that a couple of things are correct, uh, such as that subnet mask. But the, um, the hello and dead interval is incorrect. And then it's also giving us a solution of how to um, fix this. Uh, and over here we see something similar with, uh, with Claude. Uh, so you can copy and paste the outputs of uh, debug commands or show commands and you can ask questions about it. Uh, that can be really useful. Now this debug of OSPF is really short and to the point. But sometimes you have debugs that can produce a hundred lines of debug info. And sometimes it can be difficult to read too. Uh, and in th those cases uh, it can be useful to just paste it in an LLM like this and see if it can tell what is going on. Okay, um, so that is quite nice. Um, um, what else? Well, there is something else that I want to um, explain. Um, you should know that these LLMs have limitations. So one of them is that they, they tend to hallucinate. Uh, and hallucination basically means that they can create outputs that look great, but they can be complete nonsense. And the thing with these LLMs is that basically these are advanced word predictors. So they generate text, but they don't really know what they are talking about. So if you start asking it questions about something such as OSPF, they don't know what OSPF is and how it really operates. It's just predicting the most likely next word. So if you're going to use this to learn stuff, uh, it, it can be useful. Huh? Like I can do something like this. So if I would ask it to explain OSPF in a nutshell, then it comes up with a pretty good answer. Uh, it gives me an overview of what it is and how it works and the router types and LSAs and LSDBs and so on. And this looks, uh, this looks pretty good. Uh, it's going to become a bit more difficult when you're going to ask it detailed questions about OSPF where you have to understand how it really works huh? and the order of operation. So if you would ask it some crazy things such as uh, what happens when I have two routers and this interface disconnects and this router is in this area and we have a stub area over here and what would happen if this link fails and then this router or something crazy like that. Uh, like questions like these, huh, you have to really understand how this, uh, how OSPF works, how, how the protocol works, the order of operation. Uh, and you need a detailed understanding of the of uh, OSPF. When you start asking it questions like that, you will probably get a you will probably get an answer that looks great, but it could be completely wrong. Uh, in cases like these, uh, they, they tend to hallucinate because they don't know what OSPF is and how it works and what happens in certain edge cases and so on. Uh, so be careful with that. Uh, it's great to get an overview of, of this. Um, you can ask it some questions, but be careful that you can't really trust all the answers that it will, um, will give you. Um, they also tend to hallucinate when you start asking stuff that might not be in the training set. So, for example, let's say a new version of Cisco Nexus was released last week and you're asking it about a couple of new show commands. It's possible that it will come up with something, but it could be completely wrong. Now, in cases like that, what you can also do is say you have something called, what they call it a RAG, a Retrieval Augmented Generation. And basically what that means is that you can add some external data sources. Uh, so some LLMs, they can browse the, the web, or you can upload perhaps a PDF. And I think I could show you that. Um, like for example, over here, I could upload a, um, a PDF. And I have to do this um, with both uh, screens. Um, like this. So now it has one document attached. And what we'll do is, and I didn't really try this yet with uh, with Misty before, but this is the document that I uh, uploaded. It's some 
document about configuring IP fabric for media for the Cisco Nexus uh, switches. And by uploading this PDF, I can, I can ask questions about it. So let's just do something like this. So here we have a couple of uh, commands. Let's ask it something about those TCAM carving commands. And I have no idea if this is really going to work well or not, but we'll give it a try. So they're coming up with something. And they're also coming up with the same two commands, as you can see here. So it's mentioning these hardware access list, TCAM, something. There we go, and those are the two commands over here. Uh, so th this is uh, quite nice, right? Uh, so we upload a PDF, we ask some questions about it, and we get a good, uh, good answer. And what we could try, maybe this would be a good experiment to see where it's going to hallucinate. Let's try a similar prompt, but this time without um, that PDF. Let's try something like this. So you can see without the PDF, huh? so now this output comes from its uh, training set. It's telling me something, but probably not what, I, what I'm really um, looking for. Uh, so uh, I think this is a good example, huh? that by using a PDF, huh? an external data source, it's likely that you get a better uh, answer. All right, um, the last thing that I should mention that comes to mind, when you're working with these LLMs, you never know what they do with your data. Uh, so privacy can be an issue. So if you're going to use these to start uh, asking questions about your network, make sure you sanitize them. Uh, get rid of any IP addresses, um, um, passwords, even if they're encrypted and so on. Uh, make it more general and then copy and paste it here. You never know if they're going to use it um, for their training set or whatever. Uh, so make sure that whatever you, um, you do, uh, make sure you sanitize it. Another option would be to use a local LLM. So for example, you can use uh, Meta. You have uh, uh, Llama from Meta. And you can run this locally. So you can run this locally on your own computer. Uh, it can use um, uh, GPUs, uh, such as an NVIDIA uh, GPU. And you can also get pretty good answers. Huh? And the advantage is that it can run completely locally on your own computer. It doesn't uh, require internet access. Um, okay, and that's it. So these are just a couple of examples huh, of how you can use LLMs like this for, uh, for us as network engineers. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I want to thank you for watching. Until next time.